KSLSports.com presentation. Game Night Live kicks off now. Presented by America First Credit Union. Now that is the kind of energy yes. we need to start off a show. Hard to believe, but we've reached the halfway point of the high school football regular season. Week 5 delivered with some crazy finishes, upsets, and statement wins. We start with a Utah team trying to make a statement against the national powerhouse. Yeah, it's just been blowing by so far. Lone Peak, though, they beat nationally ranked Narbonne, California, two weeks ago on the road. Today, they host another nationally ranked program, Bishop Gorman, out of Las Vegas. So let's get to it, a Saturday matinee between national powerhouse Bishop Gorman and Lone Peak. It was all Gorman in the first half. Micah Bowens to Rome Odunze. Forced out of the three, they'd punch it in the next play. Then Bowens to Odunze. On the left-hand side, he's off to the races. Look at him go. Oh, man, the Gales are cruising out to a 21-0 lead. Lone Peak, though, they start to chip away. 21-7 at the half, and they keep it going in the second. Final play of the third quarter, Luke Romney to Takeo Hansen for the long completion. Then to start the fourth, Zach White runs it in. The lead is now down to seven. Then the defense helps out. Nate Ritchie, the pick. Big time play for Ritchie. Romney then connects with Eli Cloward for the touchdown. It's a tie ball game. But Bishop Gorman would answer. Bowens to Odunze again. Man, those guys got together a lot today. 28-21 Gales. Lone Peak gets the ball back down to their last chance. Romney flushed. He throws, but the ball falls incomplete. In the end, they end up one touchdown short, 28-21. Syracuse has been clutch so far this season. They scored 17 unanswered points in the second half last week to stun Weber on the road and end the Warriors' 13-game region win streak. They topped that this week, going to double overtime on the road against Roy. Before we get to the dramatic finish, let's relive a wild first quarter. One chunk play after another. That was Ty Burke. You thought he was down. Think again. He turns a simple screen pass into a sensational 25-yard touchdown. Never stopped turning those legs. Later in the first, Roy with a big play. The handoff to Izzy Gordon. Is he gone? Yes, he is. I don't think anyone touched him. 71 yards, 7-6 Roy. We're not done in the first quarter. Less than two minutes later, Bridger Hamblin to Burke again. This time, it's a 52-yard touchdown. Syracuse led 20-14, entering the second half. Roy took a 21-20 lead in the third and adds to that lead in the fourth. Cade Harris with a long catch and run, 25 yards down to the 10 moments later. Dylan Toms into the end zone. Roy has a 28-20 lead at home where they're so tough to beat. But like I said, Syracuse clutch late in the game. Syracuse quarterback Bridger Hamblin playing on an injured ankle, runs it down to the 10-yard line moments later. Hamblin scores, so the Titans need a two-point conversion to tie the game. They dial up the double reverse, and it works. Ty Burke wins the race to the pylon. What a game he had. Let's do overtime. Syracuse gets the ball first. They score. Hamblin to Burke again. Extra point good, 35-28 Syracuse. So it's Roy's turn. They go to their big fullback. Jaden Harris powers his way into the third, into the end zone. And we go to a second overtime. Roy goes first this time. Syracuse holds him to a field goal. A touchdown wins it for the Titans. Hamlin sore ankle, not holding him back on this run. Down to the five, that sets up this. Hamlin keeps. Hamlin scores. That is the ball game. Syracuse goes to Roy and takes down the Royals. Wins over Roy and Weber in back-to-back -back weeks. Syracuse is now the team to beat in Region 1. Another big matchup in Region 1, though, was Davis. They were tied for first going into the weekend, visiting their rival, Leighton. The Darts have won seven straight in the rivalry. Lancers trying to end that streak right before the half. Tyler Reed finds Aiden Fulmer right in stride. 40-yard touchdown. It's tied at seven at the break. In the fourth quarter, things got pretty fun. Davis leading 14-7, preparing to punt on fourth and two, but it's a fake. Peter Stevenson picks up more than enough for the first down. That gamble would lead to points for Davis. Quarterback Chance Trujillo can't find anyone, so he'll scramble. 22 yards for the score. Darts up 21-7. 
Layton takes the ball down the field on their next possession. Reed to the end zone, but it's picked off. Kyle Roberts. Things not looking so great for Layton at that point. They would force a three and out and get the ball back, though. So still some life for the Lancers. Fourth and eight. Reed to Fulmer. Again, it's a 46-yard touchdown. Layton cuts the lead to seven. We still have a ball game. The defense holds again. Layton gets the ball back. Another fourth down. They're going for it all. Oh, the pass falls incomplete, though. Davis able to hold off the rally. They win their third straight and remain undefeated in Region 1. A fourth quarter thriller with a couple heavy hitters in 6A, third ranked American Fork down 28 14. Then Maddox Madsen connects with Taylor Crump. AF within a touchdown. The cavemen just need to get a stop to get the ball back with a few minutes left. But Harriman, Jackson James to Alex Anderson, and Harriman closes the door. Big win for the Mustangs 34 21. All right, the game between Riverton and Kearns was bananas. A non-region matchup. Riverton 3-1, Kearns 4-0, though. In the first quarter, Kearns punting under duress. It's blocked. Riverton just has to get away from the ball, but they try to scoop it up, and guess what? We've got a loose ball. Kearns recovers. It's a first down, and the Cougars capitalize. Ami Leha, 38 yards. He sheds a tackle, and he's into the end zone. Then on the extra point, check out Isaac Ringers flying in for the block. Cougs up 6-0 after one. Second quarter we go. Kearns with a 14-0 lead. Riverton starts the momentum shift. Caleb Hamlin scoops the fumble, gets trucking the other way. 66-yard return for the score. Silver Wolves cut the lead in half. Late second quarter, Jackson Howard buys some time in the pocket. Steps up, lets it fly. How about that? 66-yard touchdown to Braden Woodruff. It's tied at 14. They're still not done. The defense gets the interception, which sets Riverton up for a last-second field goal try after a nice return. It's a 38-yard attempt as time expires at the half. It's good. Riverton with a 17-14 lead at the half. Second half now. Riverton picking up right where they left off. Fourth and less than a yard. Seth Davis punches it in for a 24-14 lead late in the third. Kearns still has a pulse, though. Dakota Lind, five yards to Austin Perry. Kearns back in front. It's a three-point game after three. So let's get to the last quarter. Kearns finding that extra gear to get back into this. Mario Zamora with the pick, and he is off the other direction. 40 yards, makes it just into the pylon for the touchdown. They're back in front. Ensuing kick with just over two minutes to go in the game. Isaac Rangers again on the return. He had that blocked PAT earlier, and now, how about a game-winning kick return? Kearns did have one last heave for it, and of all people, it was Rangers who broke it up. Riverton gives Kearns their first loss, 32 to 26. Now to Orem, USC coach Clay Helton scoping out the local talent. He's going to need some of that now. If a defensive game is what he came for, that's what he got. After the big hit, Buju Tui Severa scoops, and he scores. 45 yards, 7-0 Orem. Then Skyridge gets one. Stone Molotalo scoops and scores. The big man rumbles 75 yards to tie it up. Then Orem in trouble. Carson Baker is going to recover for the Falcons. In the end zone, 14-7 Sky Ridge. They go on to beat Orem, 28-14. East welcomes in Menlo Atherton from California, the defending CIF Division III AA state champs. Second quarter, East down 27, but go on quite a run, led by IJ Sula from eight yards out. They trail 20-14. to Next drive, it's Sula again, also from eight yards, plunges across the goal line. They take the lead with the extra point, 21-20. Here comes the defense. Usa Fanua dominates the Atherton running back. Should have been a safety. Somehow they spotted it at the one foot line. Didn't really matter because East held Menlo Atherton scoreless in the final three quarters. Leopards get a big win, 49 to 20. Well, after finishing five and five last season, Salem Hills jumped out to a surprising 4-0 start to this season. But on Friday night, a real test was in front of them. The number one team in Class 5A, the Highland Rams. So here we go with both teams coming into the game with 4-0 records in this non-region matchup. Salem Hills getting to work right away. It's Sam Hughes from three yards out. Salem Hills, 7-0 lead. 
The Skyhawks defense has only given up more than seven points once in their previous four games. The D rising up again. Willie Leota with the pick. The Skyhawks would then take a shot downfield. Devin Johnson to Jarrett Elmer. 76 yards later, it's a touchdown. Skyhawks built a 21-7 lead. Highland would get another score. Paul Clark from 28 out. That's it. Salem Hills is still perfect. A 28-14 win. They've already matched last season's win total now. Region 5, Box Elder hosting Farmington. The Phoenix almost upset Lone Peak last week. They rolled this week. Double pass, Carver Lopez to Andrew Quinton for 70 yards. That is a good start. Now to the second quarter, game tied at seven. Wyatt Everts in the quarterback with a deep ball to Jeremy Wilcox. Down goes the referee. <laughs> It's a touchdown for Farmington. Their defense shut out Box Elder in the final three quarters of a 25-8 win. Big game in region between Olympus and Brighton. Olympus would jump out to a 7-0 lead, but Brighton would answer quickly. Matthew Cirillo scores on the reverse right into your living room. Tie game. The Titans swing back. Chase Hopkins caps off the scoring drive right there. Then Cirillo, he's going to do more damage for Brighton on the slant. The quick slant gets past the defense and he's gone for six more. The Bengal defense just couldn't stop Hopkins though. He's gonna find room to run and get some nice, some nice blocks. He's tackled just shy of the goal line at the one, but he would score on the very next play. The Titans get the win, 33 to 20. Down in Utah County, Provo visiting Springville for the early lead in Region 8 and Provo would jump ahead early. First drive of the game, Luke Haslam to Dallin Havea, 45 yards for the score. Then in the second, Haslam to Taylor Heiner, 14-0 Bulldogs. Springville trying to find some offense to keep pace. The rider McGillivray comes up with the interception. That's going to lead to a touchdown drive for the Bulldogs. And then McGillivray gets rewarded with the touchdown. 21 0 lead at the half. Well, the stunning Springville in the second half. Springville opens with a touchdown drive. Peyton Murphy would find Taylor Kelly, which uh, the lead would be down to 14 points. Springville would make things interesting in the second half, but Provo holds on to win 28 22. All right, a top five matchup in 4A football. Number two, Skyview hosting number four, Green Canyon. This is a wild play. Somehow, Green Canyon quarterback Jacob London avoids being sacked, but then he throws it up for grabs, and it's picked off by Skyview. Returned deep the other way. Skyview would end up getting a field goal. But later, London makes up for the pick with this beauty to Tanner Watson in stride. 37-yard touchdown, Green Canyon up 14-5. Second half, Skyview really turns it up. Wade Carlisle on the keeper, reaches for the goal line. Skyview takes the lead 18-14, and then the Bobcats defense would close the door. Interception in the end zone. Skyview holds on 32-24. Woods Cross off to a 4-0 start this season, hosting Bountiful, rivalry game. Carter Weirman had his arm working early in this one. Touchdown toss to Braden Freestone. Then another strike to Evan Blanchard for the score. The Woods Cross defense was on their game too. They forced a fumble that was returned for six. And Woods Cross rolls in this one 41 to 17. Our Game Night Live Game of the Week featured a Region 10 rivalry between in Tooele County between two teams that do not like each other. Yeah, no kidding. Both teams entered Friday's game with two and two records as well. That only adds to it. Both won their region openers also. It's Tooele and Stansbury. The records were the only thing similar about these two teams. Stansbury dominated their rivals last night. What a game for Tommy Christofferson, the Stansbury running back. Carried the ball 34 times for 263 yards. His 31-yard touchdown, part of a 17-0 first half for the Stallions. Third quarter, Christofferson gets a break. Crew Huxford to Gabe Harris. 74-yard touchdown. The route was on. Christofferson with one of his three touchdowns, an 80-yard run. Stansbury wins the Battle of the Boots. 38 to nothing. How long have you been thinking about this one particular game for, lastly? Since probably March, when uh, one of their players started talking trash. But it means everything when, when they talk trash, say they're going to come to our field and get revenge on us. It means everything. You Everyone had doubts us. Everyone doubts us.
Next week, Game, like, game Night Live is in Cache Valley. The Skyview Bobcats will host the Ridgeline Riverhawks, two teams that know each other very well. Another rivalry game, a big battle in Region 11. You can watch it on the KSL TV app and kslsports.com. And Corner Canyon has quite the win streak going. I'll tell you about that streak and show you if it kept going coming up next. Yes, welcome back to Game Night Live. Now, entering the weekend, the Corner Canyon Chargers had won 21 straight regular season games dating back to 2017. The Alta Hawks, they'd only won one game this season. On paper, seems like it's a lopsided matchup. Well, on the field, it was a lopsided matchup. Cole Hagen had a now, huge Hagen game. 25-yard touchdown pass to Noah Kerr gives the Chargers 14-0 lead. Less than two minutes later, Hagen, 75-yard touchdown to Talmadge Handley. And, you know, we're going to speed through the rest of these things for you because Hagen was unstoppable. Six touchdown passes in the game to five different receivers. He also ran for a pair of touchdowns. Cole Hagen led the Chargers to a 59-28 win. Corner Canyon is now 5-0 on the season. Beaver and Milford haven't played each other since 2010, so this seems like a perfect time to renew their county rivalry. Milford ranked number one in 2A, Beaver number two. One of the most anticipated matchups of the season. But it turned out to be a laugher. First drive of the game, Beavers' Caleb Barney finds a hole, and he's gone untouched, 53 yards. Beaver takes a 7-0 lead. On the very next offensive play for Beaver, they're making it look easy. Riker Albrecht to EJ Allred. A 45-yard touchdown. It was the start of a route. This was a shocker. Beaver thumps Milford. A shutout and a statement win for the Beavers. Great game in Region 9, Dixie and Snow Canyon. Snow Canyon gave Dixie quite a scare in this one. Landon Fry to Jace Mendenhall, 63-yard touchdown. We go to the second quarter. Landon Fry is going to roll right. And he finds a receiver wide open, 47 yards for the touchdown. Then Dixie would run off 20 straight in the second quarter. Quarterback Reggie Graff had 100 yards rushing in this game. They led 27-14 at the half. Snow Canyon made things interesting, though. Late in the third, the defense... We've seen scoops and scores earlier in the show. You're going to get another one here. Braxton Hickman. A 69-yard return, but Dixie holds on for the win. Up next, the top plays and performers of the week, and the highlight reel is on the way as well. It's that time, the best part of Game Night Live. The wait is now over. Let's roll that highlight reel. Top plays time. We go back to Kearns and Riverton. 
This catch by Austin Perry of Kearns was sick. A two-point conversion. You give Kearns a 14-0 lead, but Riverton rallies for the win. Well, this certainly is one way to get some points, right? Uh, Gunnison Valley, Zach Stewart picks up the fumble, takes it all the way back for six. Gunnison Valley beats Rich for their first win of the season. Never stop playing until the whistle blows. Another example this week of what can happen. Ty Burke of Syracuse never stops moving his legs, rolls over the defender, and turns a simple screen into a 25-yard touchdown. We'll be right back with Primetime Performers. Let's start our primetime performers with Isaac Rangers of Riverton. A blocked PAT, a game-winning kick return for a touchdown, and a game-saving pass breakup at the final horn to help Riverton hand Kearns their first loss of the season. Great stuff. Well, Wasatch is 3-2 thanks to a big game from their quarterback Parker Quinton and receiver Jake Gilman. Quinton completed seven passes. Four of them were touchdowns. Three of them to Gilman, who had a 68-yard touchdown and a 28-yard touchdown and a 24-yard score. They beat Spanish Fork 45-7. Wasatch is good. Connor Jorgensen, North Sam Pete, scored five touchdowns on offense. A 34-yard run, a 25-yard run, another 34-yard run, a 25-yard pass. He also scored on special teams. A 34-yard punt return in North Sam Pete's 42-10 win over Grand. Have a day, Connor. Well, when someone passes for six touchdowns and runs for two more and it doesn't surprise you, you know that player's good. Corner Canyon quarterback Cole Hagen is really good. Touchdown passes of 75 and 56 yards in their win over Alta. That was a fun week. We'll do it again next week. Thanks for watching.